All right, final episode going down right now of the GY6 Honda Ruckus Stretched Build Series. Normally this is like the dreaded part of the whole build, wiring. Not for me, this is my favorite part. I've created, I'm gonna show you how, to, how it works, a 20 minute install harness utilizing your stock Honda Ruckus harness. Uses the stock fuel pump, stock ECU. Everything works. Fuel gauge, kill switch, blinker, like everything just as if it was stock works. And the cool thing is you don't even know, need to know anything about wiring. It's literally plug and play. No cutting or splicing of any sort. 20 minute install. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So when it comes to wiring up your Honda Ruckus to run the GY6 engine, nothing is easier. Trust me, I know, I've gone through it all and I would have never built this harness if I didn't think there needed to be something better on the market. But this is our 20 minute install harness. No cutting or splicing of any sort. It uses all OEM connectors. You use your original Honda Ruckus wiring harness. You run your original fuel pump, which works all the way up to 232 cc. There's a lot of benefits to using the stock fuel pump. You don't get that uh, vacuum style fuel pump, cranky, 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 and it never starts until you crank enough for the gas to reach the carburetor. Done with that, we're running the stock fuel pump. The other thing is we're using the uh, stock rectifier regulator from Honda to run our stator. Stator plugs directly into the original Honda Ruckus harness. There's nothing easier. Plug and play, using OEM stuff. Let me show you what's all included. So I'm gonna go through each component so you understand what each one of them is, and then I'll show you how to install them. Here we've got the 11 pull stator. This is great, because if you wanna run accessories, uh, electronic fuel injection or anything like that, this is an upgrade. Right now, inside this engine, we've got the eight pull stator, which we'll be removing. Not only that, it's got the OEM connectors. This will plug directly into our Honda Ruckus wiring harness, stock OEM harness. It comes with the flywheel puller, so you can remove that magneto to get to the stator, which is sweet. Not only that, we've got flex wire and a starter solenoid. Really good stuff, all of it's top of the line. All of this wiring and everything is done in-house. And then we've got this adapter harness for the choke. This plugs in directly into the choke, and then the other end plugs into the wiring harness for the OEM Honda. And then we've got our EVI motor brain, which is our CDI coil combo in one. It's a performance CDI coil combo with uh, no rev limiter. So it's a performance CDI plus all the wiring to go with it. Undo the, the ground and keep that undone until we're done with the harness, the wiring harness. Okay, well we need to start by removing this heat shield. These are eight millimeters. Two there, and then there's one up here. One down here. You wanna make sure that your uh, battery and everything's unhooked. Then you remove these eight millimeter bolts. Keep these together because if you get them mixed up, if you go longer, they'll go right through here into your new stator, so keep these together. Pro tip. Then you've got another eight millimeter up here to remove your uh, pickup. Move that out of the way. Then we got a 17 millimeter here. That's reverse thread. Now your flywheel puller. Loosen it until the uh, top of that goes all the way in. So you, you want to bring it about right there, bring it in, and then this is reverse thread. So you're going to loosen it basically to tighten it, get that down there, and then tighten that down until it stops. And you're going to tighten this one, you, just barely, just, just like that, and you can pull your magneto off. You're not going to need this tool anymore, that's all you needed it for. Eight millimeter. Keep all these bolts together so you know exactly where they go. And then you've got this little, basically these really long bolts that 
clamp this wire into place. Okay, so now we can actually remove our eight pole and install our 11 pole. So these wires right here go behind. So if you notice that here's the wire like that, it's just gonna line up and go there. I'm just gonna get a few uh, bolts in there to get them started. Just to hold it there for a minute. I like to use Loctite. I'm just gonna hold those there for just a minute so that stays there. And then you can uh, get that wire out of the way, just kind of put your gasket in place and move them out of the way so they're not gonna get pinched. You've got this wire. That's gonna go on there just like that. Let me get a little bit of Loctite to put on here and all the bolts that I'm gonna put back. Loctite. Same thing on the other one, Loctite. So you wanna make sure all your wires are out of the way and apply a little bit of pressure there and get those tightened down. The purpose of this thing here is uh, to hold that wire down. Very, very important. See this key that sticks up from the crankshaft and on your magneto? Same thing. Very, very important that you get that right. So I'm gonna turn it till it catches there. Fits there really nice. A Little bit of Loctite. Okay, all of this is back on. Now um, I can put my fan on. More Loctite. Like I said, it's very important you don't get these messed up because if you have too long of a bolt, it's gonna go right into your stator back behind. There's one thing I almost forgot to cover. See this pickup here, and here's our pickup coil. Every time this passes, it tells the engine when to spark. Well, get a rolling wrench business card. That needs to be about a business card thick between the gap there. If it's not, you're gonna have a hard time starting it. If it's any more, then this thing needs to be bent down just slightly. Now we can put this back on, fan cover. Make sure your gasket, your rubber gasket is in place. These ones that I'm screwing in right here are just plastic. You don't want to go too much. So now that your stator is installed, you've got your wiring. Come over the top, or however you want to run your wires. And here's your... Uh, OEM connectors. There's only two options, just like blocks when you're a kid, just find the match and plug it in. There is gonna be some wires that you're not gonna be using, all of these for instance. And then put your little uh, cover right over it like it was stock. Okay, lift your seat up on the other side. Here's your CV carburetor with the choke. You wanna take your choke adapter cable, plug that in just like that. Be sure that those connectors don't bend when you plug this in. It happens all the time. Very, very important. When you're using any of these plugs, take note of that. Then take this connector, it's your old choke plug, and plug it right into the adapter, just like that. So you've got your original ground it was grounded to your original engine. You got your starter here. I'm gonna send this up underneath the mount here, but I'm gonna loosen this eight millimeter. And then I'm gonna put this ground right on it. You wanna run this ground right to the starter. While you're over at the starter, there is a, uh, the original, like whatever came with the GY6 most likely cable. You wanna get that off of there. Move that out of the way. You don't need it anymore. We're not using it. Then you've got your uh, starter solenoid. This is a short one that's gonna go up at top. It's the very other end, right here. Now you're gonna unscrew the provided hardware because we're gonna use that on this starter. We're just gonna run it right there. And then there's a, that hardware that came with it. It's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to get it on, but 
it's not too bad. This is your cable to power the starter. When you push the start button, it sends power to spin the starter. I actually go around this way. So I'll spin it around a little bit. Come around and grab the back with some pliers. This has to be pretty dang tight here. There we go, nice and tight. So I ran the cable from the starter back here around. You can do it however you want, really. This is, it's up to the user. Underneath the gas tank. Very important that this gas tank doesn't rub a hole over time into this cable. So you want to do it in such a way that that does not happen. But then it'll come up all the way up here. And then our uh, star solenoid is going to be mounted right at the top there. You could slide your uh, little adapter through the plastic right there. That's normally what I do. Crank that sucker down nice and tight. I'll add the other end of my star solenoid. That's a 10 millimeter. We'll get our zip tie and zip tie on, on so nothing touches. So I've got the little rubber boot zip tied over and then the um, starter solenoid zip tied. And everything's kind of ran out of the way. Okay, so I've unraveled my EVI. I can pull the little double-sided tape off the back. This is gonna go right here. I've already cleaned this off. Okay, EVI, double-sided tape, right there. So I've got my uh, coil wire going underneath this main wire here. And then I've got this other set of wires, this blue wire, very, very important. You see this uh, little connector little uh, copper connector. You wanna make sure that doesn't bend over when you plug it in. So if you got any type of struggle, which I do, it might be bent over. So you wanna get something in there to bend over just a hair. Just bend that, ta that tab over a hair if that happens and plug this back in. Just don't let the connector bend over because if it does, you're not gonna get a connection. There it goes. And this guy, is going to plug. This is the black wire. It's going to go right on the ground with it. We'll wait till the very end to install that. Then you've got this loom here. That's going to go around the front. So recap, blue wire plugged into the service port. Make sure the connector doesn't fold over. Spark plug wire up underneath this unit here. And these wires are going around to the front. We've got our right hand control here. This wire, we're gonna follow the right hand control, the wire coming out of it, it's like a four prong connector. We're gonna follow it down here. Basically it's gonna look exactly like this because this is gonna plug in line. So there's a little zip tie here you can loosen up to make things easier. The uh, four prong connector right here, this black plug. Now I'm gonna push down on this little tang right here and give it a pull. Depending on how long it's been plugged in, it might be a little bit of a struggle. There he goes. Unplugged. Now, see this wire? Remember the connector thing. These connectors, if they're folded over when you plug them in in any way, you got problems. So when you plug it in, this is just gonna go in line. Give it a little wiggle. If it doesn't go, your connectors are probably bending over. Very, very important. Okay, that plugged in nice and easy. Now, the other side. See that, that just went in line, real nice and easy. And we could tuck that all back the way it went. Then you've got this little connector. This is your starter solenoid that we just plugged in. That's gonna plug in right here, just like that. Again, make sure your connectors don't bend Pay attention to that. So we have our right hand control plugged in. The only thing we have left is this ground, which is gonna go right here. And then we've got this connector right here. So what we wanna unplug from our brake sensor, 
It's our brake sensors from our right hand control. There's a there's two green with yellow stripe wires going into one plug. Pull one of those wires out. Looks just like that. Like I said, there's two of these going into one plug. Now plug that wire in there. And then this wire that's coming off, plug that into what you just unplugged. Unscrew your original ground and add this one to it. Make sure none of these are gonna get pinched in any type of way or rub on anything. Just make sure everything's in there nice and solid. Now we've got our spark plug wire. Here's a little thing. See if I pull hard enough, I can pull that out. It's okay. There's a little wood screw down in there. You can take this and screw it back on. Just like this. Real easy. Okay? So we're just gonna lift up the gas tank and run that spark plug wire up underneath the gas tank. And then of course, plugging it in to the spark plug, you'll hear it zip, listen to this. Sounds like a zip tie. Put the ground wire back on. This is our final deal here. Okay, let's turn it on. You'll hear the fuel pump click. There it goes. Be sure the kill switch is to the on position, not off, because you still will get some cranking. Just like before, nothing will happen unless you hold the brake, which I held the brake, and push the start button. Oh yeah. And then if you want to kill it, turn the key off, or, or you can kill it with the kill switch. So that's the complete GY6 wiring adapter harness. Super, super simple, 20 minute install. One thing that you could do, if you're not getting anything out of the, if you're pushing the start button and nothing's happening, make sure your fuel pump is plugged in because that'll cause a no start. Uh, other than that, make sure that all your connectors are plugged in, nothing folded over, and you will be ready for the road. Oh yeah, that's music to my ears. One thing that's a good idea is to block off. They have a block off plate, or you can do it like the redneck style, where you just like pinch it off like that. Otherwise, you're gonna get back firing through uh, your exhaust because it'll be sucking air. and the power's like. I just got done test riding this sucker. I jetted it 32 pilot jet, 105 main jet with an open, with this guy of course, and an open exhaust. Keep in mind, we're a mile above sea level, so things change. So here we go. Here's our brakes. Really good. So here's the front brakes. You could squeal the front brakes and squeal the back brakes. I don't know if you could hear that, but. Or I'll stop at this line up here. That does pretty damn good. Brakes are not a problem. There's acceleration right here. All 
I'll give it all the gas. Uh, maybe not. Not around a turn. Not around a turn. But this thing rides really, really good. Really good. And the, it takes bumps real nice. See, I'm going uh, 45 miles an hour, pretty much. Downhill, of course. Normally, with a 50, you would at 40 miles an hour, you'd be like balls of the wall on a stock 50. So, does nice up the hill. One thing that to note is uh, these GY6 motors, they vibrate a heck of a lot more than the stock motor. So keep that in mind. Now we can cruise, you know, 45 at half throttle, no problem, on the straightaway. Oh, what is that? Yeah, about 45. Then you got more. No backfiring or anything, everything's great. Stock front wheel. Yeah, all the blinkers, everything works. Just like stock. Horn works. <laughs>